What's up everyone, it's Deltlead, and today I'm going to show you how to use combinational logic in your Visi programs to create more advanced programs that can think and make decisions based on inputs. So combinational logic is another foundational tool in building good Visi programs that can do a lot of different things, and understanding the basic concepts behind it will do a lot to improve your ability to build programs for your rockets. Now before we get into it, if you want to be a part of the community, then hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can know when I release new videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can become a member of the ISS community to get access to exclusive members only perks. Now back to the tutorial. In coding, logic refers to operations of a program that decide an output given a set of inputs. Computer logic is binary, meaning it's based on a true or a false, a 1 or a 0, a high, a low, a yes, a no. It is a binary input. So combinational logic is when a computer takes the current state of all binary inputs, 1s and zeros, and passes them through logic gates, which results in a single binary output. These are called logic circuits, and they're how computers work at a fundamental level. I'll go ahead and briefly explain how circuits are used to build logic gates, logic circuits, and eventually computers themselves. The foundation of any logic gate is the transistor. Base. When a current is applied to the base of a the Q point of a transistor can be set by way shut. The most common in type of transistor. P type doping is when the new resistors to create a binary stable quartz crystals which oscillate any computation, and that's how computers work. Luckily, you don't need to know any of that to be able to use combinational logic in Visi. But you do need to understand how logic statements work. A logic statement is the descriptive way of explaining how a given set of inputs will create an output in a circuit. There are three primary operators or gates. The AND gate, the OR gate, and the NOT gate. The OR gate outputs a 1 if any of its inputs are a 1. The AND gate outputs a 1 if all of its inputs are a 1. And the NOT gate outputs a 1 if its input is a 0, and vice versa. There are a lot of other types of logic gates, but they can all actually be made with different combinations of these three basic logic gates. Now, there's several ways you can write out a logic statement, including truth tables, line diagrams, flowcharts, logic equations, or even in just plain English. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to use truth tables since they give a pretty clear visual representation of what a logic statement is doing. A truth table has a column for each input to the logic circuit and a single column for the logic circuit's output. Each row of the column represents a possible combination of all inputs and the output column represents the corresponding output to a given set of inputs. For reference, here are the truth tables for each of the three basic logic gates, AND, OR, and NOT. Truth tables are useful tools in visualizing what you want a logic circuit to do before you build it. When building a program that uses combinational logic, it's always best to start with your truth table. First, define what the output of your program is. For a good busy example we can tie in later, let's say that our program will determine whether or not we should ignite our landing engine. We'll let a 1 represent igniting the engine and a 0 represent not igniting the engine. Now let's define our inputs, the things our program will consider when deciding to ignite or not ignite our landing engine. First, let's have the activation group of our automatic landing program be an input. If our landing program is disabled, then we definitely don't want the engine to fire automatically, so if the program activation group is on, then it will output a 1, and if the program activation group is disabled, then it will input a 0. Let's have the second input of our truth table be whether or not our craft is grounded. If the craft is already on the ground, then we want our engine to turn off, and if the craft is still in the air, then we want our craft to be able to ignite its engine again in case it needs to stop. We'll have the grounded state input a 1, and the ungrounded or in-air state be a 0. Now let's have our third input be the vertical velocity of our craft. If our craft's following too fast, if it has a high negative velocity, let's say greater than negative 5 meters per second, then we're going to want our engine to ignite to slow us down. If our vertical velocity is greater than negative 5 meters per second, meaning we're falling slower, not falling, or rising, then we don't want our engines to burn and we want to turn our engines off. So we'll have a vertical velocity of less than negative 5 meters per second be a 1 and greater than being a 0. Now let's go through our truth table and determine what our desired outputs are for a given set of inputs. We'll go row by row down this truth table and look at the inputs and then determine the output logically. 
For the first input, the landing program is disabled, a zero, we are not grounded, also a zero, and we are not falling fast, so our output should be a zero. We're not going to ignite our engine, mainly because the program is disabled and we're already falling slow so we wouldn't need to ignite our engine in the first place. Now for the next few rows after this, you'll notice that the activation group is disabled for all of them. So we're going to go ahead and put a zero for the output for the first four rows in our truth table, because we know, regardless of what the state of the craft is, if the program is disabled we don't want it to automatically ignite. For the next row, our program is activated, we are not grounded, and we're not falling fast. Now those first two conditions would make us want to ignite our engines, but we don't have to because we aren't falling fast, so this row will also be a zero. We don't want to ignite our engines yet. Now the next row is the first one where we will actually want to ignite our engines, and it's actually the only one where we'll want to ignite our engines. Our program is activated, we are ungrounded, and we are falling fast. This situation is the only one in which we want to fire our engines, so the output for this row will be a 1. Now for the last two situations. If our program is activated but we are grounded and not moving, then we don't want the engine to fire because we should already have landed successfully or unsuccessfully. So our output here is going to be 0. Now this very last situation is a little unique. Our truth table presents an interesting situation and something we should talk about when building functions. In this scenario, our program is activated, we are grounded, but we're also falling fast according to the program. Now, this obviously shouldn't happen. If we're grounded, then we shouldn't be falling. However, programs can have errors. The game might glitch, Vizzy might have a bug, any number of issues could come up where our program might encounter a situation where contradictory inputs arise, in this case falling while on the ground. If this happens, we need to make sure our program doesn't make the rocket do something that could inadvertently make the situation much worse, like firing the engine in an unknown situation. So for this set of inputs, we're going to have our output be a zero, because it shouldn't happen, and if it does, we definitely don't want the engine to fire. Now that we have our truth table set up, let's turn it into a programmable logic function. In logic programming, there's an AND OR rule, and it's very straightforward when working with truth tables. First, you create an AND gate for every row that has a 1 in it, then take the output of all the AND gates and put them together in an OR gate. For this example, it's pretty straightforward because we only have one row with an output of 1. So our logic function is just a single AND gate. The logic function written out would look something like this. The parentheses represent the logic gate, the plus sign inside means that it is an AND gate, and the bar over the B means that the second input must be inverted, meaning that the inputs must be a 1 for A, a 0 for B, and a 1 for C for X to output as a 1. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wow, that's great and all, but that's super technical and it doesn't help me understand how to program in Visi better. Well just you wait, because now we're going to take all of that knowledge that we've built up and apply it directly into building Visi programs. So in the Visi editor, Building a program like this is actually very simple. First thing we're going to need to do is create a while true loop because we want to be continuously checking our input conditions and updating our output. Next, we'll place an if statement in our while loop and use the logic expression and. Now within the and block we will have three inputs. Our landing program activation group which we will set to 8 for now the grounded state of our craft, which we're going to put inside a not block to invert the input here. So it'll input a 1 if we are ungrounded and a 0 if we are grounded. And for the last one, we'll have a small math operator showing that the vertical velocity is less than negative 5 meters per second. Inside this loop, we'll have the program set the throttle to 1, igniting the engine if these specific conditions are met. Then, after the while loop, we'll have an else loop with the corollary command set the throttle to 0. This program works by the definition of our truth table, but there is a little glitch here if we leave it as is. We're going to restructure it slightly because setting it up like this will actually lock our throttle controls. The program will always be checking if the activation group is enabled, and if it's not, it'll automatically set the throttle to zero, meaning that we can't even lift off the ground, and if we do set the activation group 8 to on, because we're on the ground and because we're not moving, it's still going to lock our throttle in the zero position, so we're not going to be able to launch like this. Instead, what we're going to do is take the checked activation group 8 statement, put it in its own if statement, and then put all the other things in our logic circuit within that if statement. This program still works exactly the same as far as the truth table is concerned, but it allows us to turn the whole thing on or off by activating activation group 8. 
So let's load this program onto our craft, slap some landing gear on it, and see what happens. As you can see, the rocket starts to fall until it reaches a vertical velocity of 5 meters per second downwards. Then it throttles up till the velocity is less than 5 meters per second, then throttles down. It repeats this, throttling up and down and up and down rapidly until the rocket hits the ground. Then once it's grounded, it stops throttling altogether and is landed. Now, Obviously, this is not an efficient way to land, but we can use this logic statement as well as some clever math to create an auto land script that's much faster and much more efficient. We'll talk about how to create a landing script in the next video of Vizzy for Dummies. If you found this video helpful, then please subscribe to the channel. Your support is what makes it possible for me to continue making videos. Until next time, take care of yourselves and keep building.